Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We're here with Savita and we're going to talk to her, she's from Trinidad, about her experience doing the year abroad study studying Hindi in India. Hello Savita, nice to see you again. <laughs> Hi Mariana. Hi everyone. Nice seeing you again as well. <laughs> All right. So, Savita, please tell us about yourself. Just a little bit of a brief background. What do you do? What did you study? Where did you start your study? Okay. Hi everyone again. So, my name is Savita Ram Sumer. I'm a national of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm an English language and literature teacher in my country. I did my degree at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad and Tobago, where I studied um, in literature in English with a minor in linguistics. After that, two years after I completed my degree in Trinidad and Tobago, I went to India to uh, the Kendra Hindi Sanstar in Agra, the land of the Taj Mahal, where I did uh, um, the certificate in Hindi language proficiency. It's a diploma program in Hindi, but it's a very intense course. Would you say that the Trinidadian system still carries vestiges of the English educational system? Yes, we do because we follow the British language system. So when I'm teaching English, I teach my students British English rather than American English. Okay, okay. Very interesting. <laughs> um, you were saying earlier that your professor at university had suggested, sorry, that you had taken a, a course in Hindi in university in Trinidad and that this yes. professor, go on. Yes, um, I was allowed electives where you could have done courses that you wanted to do to make up the credits for your degree. So I decided to do Hindi and the professor who he was from India and he advised us that we could have applied for the scholarship but we would have been allowed to live in India and study in India for a year. That is something I always wanted to do growing up, I guess, the influence of Bollywood because I'm a Bollywood fanatic. So, <laughs> looking at all these Indian movies, I want, always wanted to live, have the opportunity to live in India. So, you went through the application process, you had the luck of finding this wonderful professor who told you about it, you went to the Ministry of... Public Administration. Okay, in Trinidad, which is a government office, correct? To, to yes turn in your paperwork and apply for the program in April. Yeah. You got accepted in July. You moved in September. You're in India. Tell yes. us about the culture shock. Okay, so that was in 2008. And even now, 12 years later in 2020, I'm still reeling from some of the shock. <laughs> it was a shock because we are a small population here in Trinidad and Tobago, 1.4 million, where it's the population of India is millions. So the streets would have been crowded, the airport would have been crowded. We got there. One thing that struck me when we were going from Delhi to Agra, they stopped for us to get something to drink. And I was shocked by the um, roadside stalls, how they are compared to what we are accustomed to in Trinidad. But after a while, you get used to them. Then the smell. What, yeah, what does that look like when you stop on the side of the road to buy a drink? Okay, so it's like a little shed where you stop, um, a little shop, but it's like more open like. We have what we call parlors here in Trinidad, but it's a bit enclosed, but it's just open and you go in, you get what you want. Um, the roadside stalls aren't always as sanitary as you would expect. Um, but after a while, you get used to all those things because it's such a large population mm -hmm. of course there are nice places as well but of course these are everyday things that we have to get used to mm -hmm. the smell when i reached there the next day to walk in the streets the smell got me but after a while you get used to it the water what does it smell like i wouldn't say pleasant or unpleasant but it was just different okay. because i would be walking in the streets in trinidad and you don't really get any smell but you just yeah Mm -hmm. um the water um you can't drink the part tap water there you have mm -hmm. to drink bottled water mm -hmm. instance in trinidad we would be accustomed to going um you have to buy something you line up sometimes they'd always line up where they want to rush the lines so the culture shock was there even the way they culturally do some of the things they do because we practice um trinidad we we are made up of mostly indo um trinidadians which are east indians or africans 
and um, so Hinduism and Indian culture is very much alike in Trinidad but the way they do things in India even the way they practice Hinduism is so different there even some of their hygiene I mean I'm not really criticizing it's just you know different some of the things we are accustomed to in terms of hygiene you don't see them practicing there so it was really a lot of culture shock but it did only some good in the end you, which you did speak some Hindi before you left I knew Hindi because my grandmother, my dad's mother, she she grew up speaking Hindi because her parents came from, her father came from India, so her parents only knew Hindi, they did not know English. She and her siblings would have only known English when they didn't because of school and interacting with others. My dad also knew some Hindi, the influence of Bollywood as well, then when I studied at um, UWE. However, in, to apply for this scholarship from Trinidad, you don't necessarily have to know Hindi. You could go and not know Hindi. Other countries will want you to know Hindi before you go. And it is advisable that you do know some Hindi because the course is a very intense course when you go there to study. This, the next question is about the immediate challenges upon making the transfer and moving country. Find a place to live or that you shared houses? Or okay, so we were allowed, uh, we were given accommodations. We stayed at the hostel, at the school, Kendra Hindi Sanstan. There was a girls' hostel and a boys' hostel. We had to share a room with someone, which was difficult for me. But there was a um, common kitchen where they would have cooked for us. And we could have also gone out and buy food, which we did a lot too as well. As the school helped us in of there was a matron at the school who took us around to get us acquainted with the shops and whatnot until we got accustomed. Um, so the first few days we did not go out alone. Even other students from other countries like Suriname and Fiji, they would have helped us move around as well mm -hmm. because they could have spoken English too with us because there were some people on the course who had gone before. So until we got accustomed, then we started moving around by ourselves. How safe was the place where you studied? Okay, so Agra was very safe, but of course you would take precautions, sightsee or whatever. You would go with someone, as, um, but sometimes in the day we would go alone to get stuff. It was not advisable when you travel out of Agra to go alone or even at... Back then we felt pretty safe, that was in 2008 2009. So it was, um, it was a pleasant experience. You look on it fondly. Yes, most of it. And also the school, um, if you go there as a foreign student, the school will ensure that you are safe in terms of moving around. On uh, November 2008, um, there was the Mumbai terrorist attack. Right. And God, you right, were there for that. Yes, I was there, but of course Agra is very far from Mumbai. But of course, everyone back home here was freaking out and we were asleep and no idea what was going on. <laughs> yes. I was wondering why is my phone going off all night? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You went from September until when? Me. I left India on May 2, 2009. Yes. Now please tell us a little bit about the routine. What was it like to live in India? Okay. So a typical day could have started at either 5 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. So it depended on, um, apart from the classes, there were some extracurricular activities such as Sanskrit, yoga, dancing that we could have taken part in. But these classes took place early in the morning. So I had started Sanskrit, which would have been around 6 a.m. And then I dropped out because for health reasons, the course was divided into poetry and prose class. Then we had vocabulary class and oral class, which we had those three classes in the morning. And then after lunch, we had the grammar class. And then... All of those classes in Hindi? Yes, in Hindi. Um, some would have been done through English Hindi, but mm -hmm. most tried to do it through Hindi alone, so that it was okay for some students through Hindi alone, and for some of us, it, we needed the English to help us yeah. along. You've, you've taken us through a typical day, the, the rhythm of life in India. Okay, so like after class, we could have, with the time was basically ours, so you, yes, you would have had assignments, but you did them on your own. So sometimes after class, we would have decided we were going out to get food, if we would have dinner, because the menu is basically the same, so we knew what day of the week was what, while it is shopping or sightseeing. Sometimes you would hear that they are letting you foreigners into the Taj Mahal at a cheaper rate, so we would all rush and go to see the Taj Mahal. Um, on weekends, we would 
the idea of rooms we had to wash us in a bucket there in a washing machine so i don't know if that has changed now wow. yes okay. yes so you can imagine during the winter washing your clothes putting it to hang it to cold yes well hang on a second how's the weather there year round so from sep- september wasn't that bad it was a bit warm still then october it started to get cold november december is very cold mm. around february it's still cold because you don't get snow all through the country we had to go to shimla to see snow at the end of march april it starts to get very hot when we left in may it was very hot so the um weather changes are very extreme where exactly was where you were so agra is in the north mm-hmm. um it got cold there yeah, but it did not snow you have to go way up to the north like into the hills you go to shimla and from shimla you go to manali which is the only place in india that snows that's way up in the mountains okay what about the festivals you will always hear about these wonderful indian festivals and lots of colors and lights and what not yes the festivals are very colorful but for some reason in agra it did not really have big celebrations as compared to other parts of india because that was a bit disappointing to me because i'm accustomed to celebrating the festivals in a big way here in trinidad for example the ganesh festival in um august september is very huge here in trinidad and tobago diwali is very big here in trinidad and tobago we have lots of free diwali um programs and festivals um happens before um even noratam is a very big celebration here in Trinidad and Tobago we do it both on a spiritual and cultural level um but the festivals were celebrated on a smaller scale in Agra however in other parts is celebrated in a bigger way the Ganesh Utsav which is in September when we went was the first one that we exposed to there because the school had some celebration so while it was quiet it was nice because it kind of gave us a home feeling that you know yes we are away from home but we could relate to something um the wali was a bit disappointing because they were just like instead of whereas in trinidad we like a lot of play dias i saw a lot of electrical lights there but maybe that's just where we were there were other parts where they would use the dias like in the villages and the more traditional so you're talking about the part yeah. with the candle inside correct no we fill it you could use the candle or wax but traditionally fill it with coconut oil and the wick How many dialects are spoken in India? No. I'm not sure because it's a lot. Each different region will have their different dialect. That's why they sent us to Agra because standard Hindi is spoken there. Oh. And when you go out into the public, you know, they speak Hindi, whereas the friends and if you go out into Delhi, they speak English. So that's why they sent us to Agra to study. So in Agra, <clears throat> where they speak the standard Hindi. Yes. Good. Did you find that there were a lot of people that spoke English rather you know Hindi and English Um not really some of them spoke English for instance those living nearer to the hostel mm-hmm. but when you go out mostly some of them could speak English but most of them would speak Hindi No oh, okay so so when you were in Agra you didn't have a lot of access to speaking in English Well who we interacted with If you interacted with the foreign students yes if you interacted with Indian students Interesting. Okay, that then that was a really immersive experience in the Hindu language for you. Yes, yes it was. Did it, it did it make you then fluent? Do you do you feel like you're fluent in Hindi? Well, back then, but no, not really because I haven't really been practicing. I could understand, for example, when I'm looking at television, I don't always have to read the subtitles, but my problem now is responding because I haven't really been practicing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's typical, yeah. What were the best and the worst parts of India that you found? Okay, so the best part for me was um of course Agra visiting this Mughal the Mughal empire all the different architects and buildings because while we all know about the Taj Mahal which is a love story of Shah Jahan and Mumtaz mm-hmm. his grandfather King Akbar who was the first muslim king to marry a hindu queen joda queen joda a rajput princess and patipur sikri is one of the monuments that he built and dedicated to them and their love and then he also built the red fort their story is very interesting because it changed 
um, the dynamics and the way Hindus and Muslims interacted back then. Because back then, a Hindu back in the 15th century around there, because Hindu-Muslim relations weren't always cordial back then. So that I'm in love with their love story and everything about the Mughal Empire. I read a lot of books on the Mughal Empire and their stories. So visiting different sites in Agra, uh, then it's the first time I went to a masjid because I never visited a mosque where Muslims go to pray. Mm-hmm. I, know I had not visited one in Trinidad before I left, so I was glad to go to one there. Visited the Hindu sites as well. For instance, I went to Ayodhya, which is the birthplace of Lord Rama. And in Trinidad, the Ramayan is our main text, Hindu scripture that we use. So I was very glad to go there. Mm-hmm. As well as to Mathura, Lord Krishna's birthplace. Mm-hmm. But to Shimla, you would think you are back in Spain or England because it's so beautiful and so clean. Mm-hmm. And then you go up to the mountain, put up into the mountain, so Manali to see snow. I enjoyed shopping in Delhi. So visiting the different places, meeting people from different parts of the world because um, we had students from so many different countries living in our hostel. So I get to interact with people in different countries. That, so that would have been the best part of it. Mm-hmm. Of course, the food, because I fell in love with Indian food then. Like paneer, I love paneer. It was my life savior back then because being vegetarian, the worst part would have been getting sick all the time. Oh, I would not trade really experience for anything. Excellent, excellent. I'm sorry to hear that you got so sick. See, it seems like you learned a lot from the experience, but what would be the key points you would say that you took away from this experience? This is that to appreciate what I have in life, to appreciate the life we have here in Trinidad because the poverty in India is something that strikes out. Um, there is so much, while still there is all these lovely places and whatnot in India, we see in Bollywood on TV shows is different to so when you have to go there. And so there are a lot of three children who will come and beg for money, food, even though you would have already eaten or drunk from, a, from something, as you were drinking a Coke, they will come and ask you for it. Mm-hmm. They don't mind that you would have drunk from it because, you know, they don't have, they can't afford to buy something. So affected me, you know, seeing it. I appreciate what we have, well, you know, that what we have, not just financially what you have, but also spiritually, everything. It just changes your whole perspective on everything in life. The next thing that I learned to appreciate more is what we have as Hinduism back here in Trinidad. Not that I'm criticizing how they practice Hinduism in India, but um, we are a little bit more traditional here in Trinidad, for instance. Although I'm vegetarian, the rest of my family eat meat, but when it's time to do prayers or festivals coming up, they will fast for a prolonged period of time. I was shocked to see them cooking meat for Diwali in India. Also, um, we practice Hinduism on a more communal basis here too. For instance, you go to the temple, you have a lot of big prayers. Um, if it wasn't for COVID, we would have had lots of big prayers over the past few months. Mm. So, whereas in India, you're just going to the temple, you offer your prayers quietly by yourself, you leave. So it gave you a new perspective and appreciation of where you yourself came from and where you grew up. Yes. Which is something interesting that travel does to us at a certain age. How old were you when you went? I was 24 when I went. Yeah, it seems to be that between 18 to about, uh, maybe even go up to say 30. If you have a travel abroad experience and you study abroad, it does something to you where you adopt a piece of that place that you went to and you also leave a place of yourself in that place where you lived for that time, didn't you, wouldn't you say? That's true because um, Agra is still a very big part of me. I still think about it. I'm actually reading a book right now based in Agra. Mm-hmm. And it's about how these people went there trying to not get away from their problems, but to find solutions to their problems, people from different parts of the world. And it is a healing experience too because you learn a lot. You heal from your own experiences as well. Mm -hmm. very powerful what would you recommend to someone who's thinking of doing this scholarship and studying in India Uh, how can they prepare themselves I think they should 
do some background study, get some information on the place because not just Agra, you can also go to Delhi, but their classes will be in English. But depends on where you're going to study and what you're going to do. Get enough, but not just information on the course, but as well as the place, the food, the weather, everything, so that it will help you to adopt better. Back then, we did not have as much information as you will have now. So get some information, know exactly what you are getting into, although nothing could really prepare you. No matter where you go, study or live, you know, it's a different place, but still get some information. Also, if you have health issues, walk with, find out, will you get treatment there? Will um, tablets, medication, etc. be easily accessible? You'll have to get certain shots because I had to get the yellow fever shot. But your embassy, they will help you through these things. And we had to take malaria tablets. So depending on the area, um, diseases might be prevalent there. So you would need to know exactly what to do. Yeah, and and that's that's doable. I mean, I myself have been to Guatemala and Peru, and I've had to take those special shots that you have to do. Yeah. With it's just something to do, and then you have a wonderful experience when you're there. Yeah. But nowadays with the internet and with the uh, help of this video, I'm yes. sure lots of people will be able to find out more information before they do this type of study abroad. Well, I want to thank you so, so very much, Savita, for taking this time out to speak with me and to speak with us and to share this experience with the whole YouTube family. And um, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It was my pleasure. It's, it was really nice to see you. So we just heard from Savita, a wonderful conversation as well for me. It was enlightening to know that there are also scholarships available to students from other countries, um, that there also exist these connections between the Caribbean and India. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. If you like this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe and hit the notifications so you know when the next video comes up. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.